Hello and welcome to Tights TV uh, Full House again. We've got James, Andy in the red corner, or is it bottom corner from this one? And Dave, as always, a pleasure to have you on. Um, Friday soon comes around, so thanks for taking time out from work and back and, and joining. It's appreciated. Uh, before we get on to game, I'm just going to read out some stuff going on social media and stuff about uh, a fan called Andrew Scales uh, in Pontiend. Only 56 year old, uh, got diagnosed with cancer 10 months ago, aggressive, and sadly passed away on a good Friday. Um, so there's things going about social media where they're trying to get the fans on the 56 minutes on the Oxford game up 22nd of April to do like a minute's applause. So, again, any Oxford fans have stuff like that, just shared it and put it out there that uh, there will be a, a minute's applause at 56 minutes. Friendo Skills, who sadly lost his life, um, you know, after a, a pretty short, you know, cancer being made away. So once you're red, always a red. Um, so, James, for the Screen Rovers, we kind of know not to take them lightly. I mean, you go back a couple of weeks ago, bottom at league, and we did a number on Sheffield Wednesday. So, again, not to be taken lightly, is it, uh, James? No, no, exactly. Um, I mean, they're going to be up for it and they're not going to want to lose, get relegated at home. Um, no no team wants that. And when they, they actually play a bit of football as well, so they're going to be up for it. It's not There's no easy games at the moment. So um, they're going to make it really hard for us. They're going to do what they can to make it as difficult as they can. So, yeah, I'm expecting a tough game. Yeah, tough game, Andy. I mean... Big Duncan Ferguson. Um, mm. It seems to be. I mean, I've watched a bit of few profiles on him and that, and it seems to be loving a challenge. Uh, probably, I, I think he's like a, for me a manager that's like underrated, un, underrated, and under radar in certain respects. But he's always been knocking on the door, you know, and he's had to drop down leagues to finally get a chance. But you know, he's one of them kind of managers. What you can see him getting tuned out of his players, what he's got. Yeah, um, I agree with that. He's got his work cut out there, though, any at Forest Green. Um, yeah, it's going to be. Um, well, um, it's like what we've been saying uh, with these games, anyway. You know, we, we should, we should have no worries really, but it don't always go like that, especially this time of season. Um, but yeah, um, Duncan Ferguson will be experienced enough to see how we play. Um, he'll set up his team best he can. And it, I think it will be difficult for us, or they'll try and make it difficult for us. Um, and yeah, I've got to take them uh, with as much respect as when we do when we're playing a team up there in the league, uh, up near top. Um, otherwise, like what Wednesdays uh, did, like you just said, they'll, uh, you know, they, they might turn us off a bit, but uh, I'm quietly confident tomorrow. Uh, I'm just hoping pressure don't get to us. Um, I, I think that's my main worry tomorrow. It's not so much their game, it's our game because we need to... Well, I've just read today that Duff says we need to go on a, a perfect 100% run now till end of the season. And, uh, you know, that, that's a lot for players to carry on their shoulders. That, And I'm hoping that doesn't affect them. Could work both ways, really. It might drive them on, or like I said, with, with it being a, a young squad, it might backfire. But time will tell. Um, but yeah, we've got to treat them with respect, yours, whatever we do. Treat them respect. I mean, Dave, just what Andy was saying there. Treat them respect. We, can, we can't take game lightly. Um, how would you be going into that game, and Dave? How would you be approaching it? Obviously, taking game to them not allowing them to dictate their kind of style on us, uh, Dave? Well, it's it's going to be a, a tricky game at any road, but, you know, you know, they can get relegated tomorrow. They, that's, like James said, they're not the one happening in front of their own fans. They're going to go down fighting, so that sort of team. Um, I, I think it's going to be very, very difficult. And um, it's one of those games where you have... A lot of tri- you've got a team that turned in over Jeffrey Wednesday a couple of, couple of weeks ago, and they're just so unpredictable. You know, they've had some good results, they've had some a lot more bad results. Obviously, that's why they're down at the bottom. 
but you no, know, they got nothing to lose, you know. And they're the games that are the are the most difficult, and you, you can't plan for those because they're just gonna have to go for it. But on the flip side, of that we can sit back and hit them on the break, which we are good at. You know, it's mm. it's what we've done a lot over the past couple of seasons. You know, it, it's it's all the onus is on them. They've got to come out and um, you know do what they've got to do. They've got to win. You know, nothing else will matter for them. And um, although we've got to win, it's not as vital as it is for them. So, you know, we, we can just sit back and hit them on the break. They've got to push players forward. You know, that'll work in our favour, I think. The only thing that concerns me going into tomorrow, sort of team Forest Green are going to is the weather. It's It's been absolutely bouncing down here for weeks now. And I'm really surprised the game's going ahead. Uh, the cricket was can- was called off down in Bristol on the road. The pitch horrendous, completely waterlogged. And I was amazed this, the game's going ahead. So the pitch is going to be like, it's going to be boggy. It's going to be cutting up. It's not going to play in our favour, the you know, the nice football that we play. So, you know, we're battling for us. We're going to be battling the pitch as well. But all we can do is just go out there and, you know, don't lose our heads. You know, they got it. They they come into the game with all the impetus on them. You know, they they've got to come for us. That's all they can do. They can't afford to sit back. They've got to come and they've got to get a win. Um, and I think our plan's got to be just to you know either hit them right away. You know, we've come out the traps flying in the last couple of games and it's not lasted more than three or four minutes. But either come out the traps straight away and get an early goal, uh, shake them up a little bit, or just sit back and see what they do, see what their plan is, adapt to that. And like I say, I think it's going to be them coming forward, hit them on the break. That's, that's what I'd be doing if I was uh, deaf tomorrow. It's on break. And like I said, a good point what you've done there and all with uh, state of pitch as well. I mean, mm-hmm. James, just following on from what Dave was saying there, it's like added pressure, in it? Um, going to, like Dave was saying there, a ground that you know potentially could be a, in a in a bad shape to play football that we want to try and take our game to added pressure on the what Andy was saying earlier what you know Duff we need to be winning all these games like now because destiny kind of thing is in our hands we only can do what we can do uh, expecting other teams to be all being well drop or you know slip up somewhere down that line with six games to go but again. You're getting to the kind of stage now where it's going to be a test of character in it for players, for managers, for set up, for fans, even going down to be it might not be the greatest of games, but if you come away with a win, you'd take that all day long, James, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you've, you've got to dig in, you've got to be able to prepare to come in these places and battle and get stuck in and be absolutely focused 100%. Um, obviously, the conditions can't help, but it's, it's, it's how you adapt to them. So, I'm um, sure like Duffel in his team talk will get the team as mentally ready as they can do um but we need to be mentally as mentally ready as players as well to deal with what conditions we face or mm. or whether we have to play play a different style in order to try and win the game because it's not going to be easy but we need to have a right approach from the start and be absolutely on it because there's no room for error really so yeah good point hey, yeah and like I said, great mentality, just, you know, it mindset of players as well, not to take it for granted and to mm-hmm. see how they adapt to it and take it on. I mean, Andy, just going on from what James was saying there, you know, it's like players are going to adapt to it and it looks like we're going to have to adapt to it without Nicky Cadden. We're not appealing red card. Uh, yeah. If you don't, don't agree with red card, you know, listening to what uh, Duff was saying on local radio, we're talking to some referees. We can't tell you that, you know, yet and no, but, all vibes were coming away from referees, like saying it's not really worthwhile, you know, appealing it because it's messy. So again, mm. it's going to be another change for Sonners, Laresh coming in, but suitable replacement. You know, it, it seems to slot in there. Um, yeah, I mean, going back onto that, where you know <clears throat> we think it's not going to be bothering with and it's had state of affairs really in it with EFL um, if that's our club's mentality is uh, with a red card I mean would say for instance uh, a team probably ironed it championship or even it premier 
Um, would would they be treated like that? Probably not. Um, mm. So it's it's yeah, it's going to be a big loss uh, for Cadden. Um, it got problem with Lakesh, um, but it's not started uh, games that much as he really. Um, and I think he's a different type of player anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of, of just adapting um, on on fly really. Um, which which isn't ideal, but it is what it is, isn't it? And at day, um, but I, I think it's going to be a big loss me tomorrow. I I honestly do. Um, I, I think he's been brilliant, me, uh, Cadden. Yeah, Dave. I mean, Andy touched here. Cadden in the last two games, two goals. You know, confidence. We kind of see him playing now and against Forest Green. You know, I think Cadden would have wanted to play in this after all at games, wouldn't he? You know what I mean? Going, you know, taking it to him and showing him what he can do, which we know he can do, and he's, what he's been showing recently. Getting forward and creating and also chipping him with a couple of goals. So, again, it's a back threat down left-hand side, a bit like Williams down right, when he kind of appreciates it when he, when he is missing. We miss that bit of lack of pace and bombing forward to create chances, Dave. Yeah, I mean, I think Cadden's been one of the players of the season for me. You know, his all-round games, you know, it's come on so much since when he first since when he first signed for us. He's just grown in confidence, and he's the set pieces. Gets down the left wing, he chips in with the goals, and he's going to be a massive loss. But I think Larkesh has got the capability to slot into that role and do well. I watched them down at um, Cheltenham. Back in mm. February, and um, when Callum's young was born, and he missed that game. Mm. And Lancashire yeah. had a cracking game, and I thought there was more pace in the team down that wing with Lancashire in the side. And again, going back to the state of the pitch, it might not work in our favour with that. I think he's he's more of a flair player. I think Lancashire, he's a little bit more trickery down the down the down the wing than. Cadden, Cadden be a, your old school sort of footballer, but yeah, Cash is he can take the ball out well like Cadden can, and I just think the pitch is going to hamper that a little bit tomorrow. But that's that's regardless whether it's Cadden or whether it's Cash. But I think he's he's more capable of filling in the role. Um, yeah, it's a massive loss, but we've also got a great player to come in and replace him. Disappointed, like Andy said, with the club's mentality of not. Appealing the red, it was mm. you know no one in their right minds thinks that was a red. You know opposition fans that I've seen, Wednesday fans on social media, you know they, they all agree it wasn't a red. So why they're not appealing, yeah. I don't know. I know there's the possibility of it being extended, but at the end of the day, I think you've got to go for it. But they haven't, you know. So we we've got to move on there. But um, I think like Cash has got the capabilities of coming in. You know, pick it up from where Cadden's left off and they're do, putting a good shift in the next three games. He's got a lot to prove and he's got a, a run of games now where he can do that. Yeah, true. You know, it's like, yeah, good point as well. I mean, you look at like Ishted when he came in uh, for Collins and look what happened there. He seems to have, you know, growing confidence and now there's a, a debate going off like saying, is Collins going to be ever going to get a game for, before end of the season like now? So, Competition and like, yeah, good good point there. You know, who, who knows? Uh, Lakesh might come in three games and he might have a, a storm. And it's like, oh, hold on a minute, mm. are we going to upset this night now because we're in a run because there's only six games left? So, yeah, good point. I mean, James, going back to Forest Green lineup, you know, for us, I kind of probably guess it's going to be yeah or no, but you know, keep it as it is. Would you make any changes going into the Forest Green game? We already know about Cadden, but would you make any change anywhere else on the pitch? I probably, um, I probably any change I probably would make is probably put Norwood in for what what's us because obviously it's against his former club. So obviously you're always mm. going to want to do well against your former club. You're hungry in us, and I always think yeah. Norwood and Cole. Plus, he, plus he was rested the last game, so he's going to be a lot fitter as well. Um, and I think Norwood and Cole have been working really well together recently. So I that's the only change I would make, though. Yeah, good point, uh, Andy. Same. Yeah, agree with James. Um, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, Norwood and Cole up front. 
Um, obviously, uh, we it got Cadden, so yeah, it was like probably Lukaku will come in somewhere. Um, but yeah, apart from that, exactly the same for me. Exactly the same. So, at all, all, Dave, uh, do you agree with James and Andy, or any any other changes we we think you uh, see happening? I do. I I I do. I'd be tempted to drop Cole and start Tedich. Mainly, we're gonna have to really? be putting ball. We're gonna have to put, be playing balls off the, off the ground. You know, with the state of the pitch tomorrow. And I think Tedich is more, Cole's not a threat in the air for me. He should be more of a threat. You know, he's good on the deck, but he, he's lacking in his aerial quality. And I just think if you put a couple of decent crosses in, and if you can get on the end of some of those, get a couple, get a goal or two, do his confidence world a good. Obviously, he does does well for us. Then if you fetch on Cole and say, ah, Forest Green, you know they're gonna, I think they're gonna be tiring by about the 60th minutes. You know they've got to they've got to put a shift and a half in tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I think they're gonna be tiring. And your deal bringing on. Right about 50 minutes, I think against the tie, they just work really well in our favour. Mm, interesting, but uh, mm. uh, here's one for you while we're on a bat, Tedich. Would you, I mean, Dave, you know, you, you made a good point there, you know, with height and stuff like that and, and call, but I'll open it out to uh, your three here. Would you rather swap, because we haven't seen out to Oli Shaw at the minute, we don't know for whatever reason, and he's our player, would you fetch an Oli Shaw for Tedich? Uh, Dave's kind of more or less gone with his, his starting eleven, but I mean, Oli Shaw, I mean, is it a player that mm, he could do a job for us, but for whatever reason not getting involved? Would you, would you like to see him more involved? I'll put a bad out to you. Anyone? Um, yeah, I think I think Shaw I saw Shaw. Sure. He came on again, helping them, and he, he he didn't really get into the game very much. And I think I, I've seen like a few appearances here. I think he's has he played only about two or three times. He's come off off the bench. He's mm, he's not, not really many. done much, and I just I just I don't know what's going on there. I really don't. You know, he had all the promise when he mm. came down. But um, obviously, Duff's not seeing something that he wants to see with his players on the on the pitch, and he's not getting game time. Um, Tedich is getting a little bit more, but um, I don't think it's the right end of the end of the season to drop a, a new player, and it's not sort of like played with the players before. I think it's he might be like a, you know, I, I don't know. I just. I'd rather keep with players that have played with each other a little bit more, especially as Duff is saying now, we need to win every game. You know, it's making bring new faces, I think, is just not the right thing to do. My my, my punt on tennis was just literally based on the, the state of the pitch tomorrow and the fact that mm. I think Cole mm. in the second half with his pace would be the, the, better, mm. the better weapon. But um, yeah, I'd, oh, I'd forgotten about Shaw, if I was being honest, because you just don't see him. He's just the forgotten boy, isn't he? Yeah, true. Yeah, James. Um, I'm. This is it's a tricky question because what, what I've seen of Tedich, I don't think he's done that much since he's been on the pitch. He's not really. He's his hold up play is all right, but I don't think he's really offered much. It'd be nice to see what Shaw can do if he had if he had a bit of time on the pitch. If it doesn't work, him and obviously take him off. But do you think with Tedich it's a confidence thing, James? It could be. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Mm. Andy, your, what, what's your thoughts on it, mate? Um, I've said before, um, is our player sure? And I think, well, I would like to see him on bench more than Teddy, mm. to be honest. Uh, to be honest. Uh, it should like be Barry Cotter pretty... and all, isn't it? Is, is another player yeah. started and Ben is yeah. like going at it, uh, squad kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, so... they're, they're just mm. forgotten players. Um and Shaw must be fit now, because, you know, let's uh, 
be honest, you know, he's a professional footballer, he's, he's training every day, so uh, yeah. it, it must be fit. And the only way to get match fitness is to stick him in the squad, surely to God. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'd like to see him on bench more than Tedic, but um, again, you don't know what's in Tedic's contract. Um, he, he might have so many uh, appearances or first team uh, appearances that the need to fulfil uh, for his contract, and that might be a factor um, why Shaw's not getting in as well. Um, and yeah, we could see Cotter on bench tomorrow with Cadden uh, not being there. Um, so yeah, be interesting. Uh, it'll take that vacant spot, um, definitely. Mm. Yeah. yeah, a few, a few debates here, didn't we, really? For you know, certain players. I mean, I'll, another player uh, chuck into the mix as well. Martin, Josh Martin, another one. What's mm. <laughs> frustrating player and gone? You, you know what I mean? So there, there's been players what's coming in, shown potential probably. Whether it, like what Dave said earlier, um, whether it's probably the wrong time of season, like now nah, to do. We'll we'll try see if it works. If you know what you've got, you stick to your plan. Even more so now coming into in single figure games kind of thing what's the point in taking a risk and I get where Dave come from with really like saying the players where he's working with at minute he kind of knows them I mean Teddy's got injured he went back to Man City had his rehab when he came back so I was surprised with that I mean you know I thought that where we've lost well we've seen him back in kind of thing when he's gone back to Man City but to come back again Duff must understand and realise what he's got to work with maybe I don't know if it would have been my table not really to play for. Probably we might have seen more of Cotter or Shaw, probably. It might be because we, we aren't league. It's probably dictating a lot of selection mm-hmm. there, Dicks. But, yeah, good good points. So, you know, I just throw it out of here. Just wanted to get your your opinions on it. Um, so, we'll go to score prediction. Uh, James, what what, uh, what are you going with score-wise? Um. I'm going for like a one nil win for us, but I reckon it's I reckon we'll play well, but I reckon it's gonna be a really tough game and um they're gonna make us work really hard. So I'm gonna go for a one nil win for us. One one nil win, tight game, yeah. And he's gonna have a chair shot right ahead and uh, I don't know what else, but he's probably gonna say five no to now he said in an attic, but <laughs> one Andy, we'll we'll get your thoughts, mate. I'm gonna go for a reasonable uh Wait, realistic. <laughs> a realistic scoreline of 3-1 to Reds. Um, 3-1? Right. Yeah, I want to... Uh, I know what they said about pitch like, but uh, to quote one of my other heroes as well, Alan Partridge, I want to see liquid football tomorrow. Liquid football. <laughs> <laughs> always got to be Andy. Uh, got, always chuck one in there, mate. Always chuck one in. Dave, uh, I think he's had a few too many to drink, Andy, this time afternoon, but here we go. Uh, and <laughs> James is going one no, and Andy's going for a 3 1, which is possible. We're both going for wins at the minute. Dave, how do you see this one, mate? Um, I, I, I see it being a draw, if I'm if being honest. But I'm going to be put a little bit of optimism and I'm going to go for a 2 1 Barnsley win. Yeah, I think I, I some of the saying a draw. I just got this this feeling, but you know, I, I'm going to say two one. I'm going I'm, I'm to ignore that. I'm just going to shut that off. I'm going to say two one to us. Two one. Yeah, uh, I'm. I agree with you, Dave. I think it's when you look at things in consideration. The bottom of the table. We've had a win against Wednesday. We're going to up their game no matter what, and we're going to make it a doggy result. And what I've seen in, you know, against the such as, like, I don't mean disrespectfully, but as a game against Burton, when we had the chances and didn't convert them, I think that could be key for us. You know, we've got to, we have got to start the game and we can't allow, we've got to break them down. We, we know what we can play against, which is like your, your Plymouths and Yips, which is coming up, and your Sheffield Wednesdays and them kind of teams. We know what we can do. But when you come to the teams fighting down the air, in bottom half or in relegation zone, it's so much harder to play away at them grounds. And for some unknown reason, you know, we saw it to Exeter. You know, it's like so frustrating because you know that the players and the lineup and the squad are capable of doing it. 
You just know that they are. But for whatever reason, they can set up and be so in your face and make it a, a, such an, an uninteresting game, whatever. It just like, what the... Should be town, prime example. Yeah, they were in it with elbows, we're doing that, but they were doing their kind of style and it was disrupting us. And it was, yeah, we won. I'm not getting away, we won. But it was a weird atmosphere. It was, it was just a weird yeah. game altogether. Uh, and I get that we're not going to win, you know, great, fantastic, you know, football. But I do want us to take a chance in the convert him and let, let us impose our play on him. So I'm going with Dave. I'm going 2-1 on this. I think Ferguson's going to have his team riled up. We know that. James has uh, gone 1-0 and, you know, possibly close game. And day 3-1. You know, I know you've been on Wappy Jokes this afternoon, so I'll let you off on that. But I think we're all wanting wins. And they are, like even Duff said, we need to win every game because we've got to just do his own thing. Now, if we draw, this is a question for you. So we're all going for bounds and wins. So we'll close off on this. So if we draw tomorrow, and I'll open it out to everybody here. If we draw tomorrow, is that automatic definitely out of the way and we just solidate from on playoffs? Mm, all depends on all the results to me. Right. Okay. Okay. Interesting. James, Dave, anybody? Um, I, I think, I, I think, um, playoffs are gas safe. You know, but there's no, you can't let complacency keep going as you've been going. And um, mm. momentum's the key going into the end of the season, you know. Yeah. You keep that momentum up. If you start getting complacent because you're, you're guaranteed a playoff spot, then, you know, you're going to start making mistakes. Uh, you're not going to play what you're... You're, gonna, you, you're not going to play the football that you, you've been playing. It's um, mm. it's almost like the sort of football you're playing pre-season friendlies. Like, you're going to, you know, you're going to shirk out the challenges so you don't want to get injured for the run-in. You know, you don't want to, no one wants to miss the playoffs. You know, it's mm. massive time for a player. So I just think uh, if they get that mentality, you know, then it's going to upset the, the rhythm of the game. It's going to um, take that momentum off us. And for me, going in and winning every game now is imperative, or at least yeah. at least not, not losing any games. Not losing any games is the mm. important thing. We need to go for the wins. We need to keep doing what we're doing. And no matter where we, are, where we are, whether we're in the playoffs, guaranteed, whether we can still get to the automatics, we've got to keep doing what we do. And yeah, just as you, as you were, just don't change your game, your game, your game plan. Just just go for the mm. win. And just play the football. Just go for the win, yeah. And again, if you if you are going to be in playoffs and that, you want to be going into playoffs in a good in a good form. Good mentality, good state of you know mind. I mean, James, do you kind of agree? It, you know, it's not you know. It's so it's just like play and win every game of the season. Just take it as that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, you just gotta give it everything you've got. And I think when you go into a playoffs with momentum, it sort of breeds confidence as well. So, I mean, you look at um the season where we sort of came back and finished sixth on the last day of the season. Mm. and um, we went in with momentum the team was confident um, we were even confident going into the playoffs and it it was just amazing so yeah we've got to go in with momentum and give it 100% yeah get okay, 100% get okay, 100% confidence breeds confidence and also breeds wins all being well um, James Andy Dave appreciate you taking the time out some good talks some good debates uh, some good food for thought as well and uh, Please like, subscribe, and share. Let us know your, you know, what you're thinking. Comments, uh, score predictions. You know, is this season of uh, we still carry on playing it? Got to win every game at season. Uh, all being well, there's a few teams around us can slightly slip up in our favour. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, so yeah, James, Andy, and Dave, thanks for joining me. Uh, going to well, first yeah. screen, have a safe journey, safe journey back, and let's hope we can come back to Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, with three points tucked under his belt. Uh, one thing left to say, you reds. <laughs>